Last year, Cappy Fingers and I started our work together on the Simon Fingers Big and Small campaign in partnership with National Deaf Children's Society. Cabby Dome but Fingers are made when everyone comes together. But for many people, these moments can be quite isolating as we find ourselves trying to piece bits of the conversation together. We set out to get people learning British Sign Language with everyday phrases so more of us can feel included in the conversation. And just like that, the campaign created awareness of my superpower. I'm so excited to announce that this year I get to continue the partnership with Cadbury Fingers as they have come on board to help me launch the first ever series of Superpowers of Tasha. Together, we want more people to share their own superpowers so more of us can feel included. As well as providing a best studio snack for me and my guests, getting to work with Cadbury Fingers again means we will be reminding you regularly to keep learning a little BSL via the Siamese Fingers Hub. You can even learn, would you like a snack? And my answer every time, yes. Head to siamifingers.cabby.co.uk to start your BSL journey. Hi everyone, welcome back to Superpowers with Tasha and today we've got another amazing, incredible guest. I'm so excited to have him on today and he has used his TikTok, using his platform and he's just a great guy and he experiences Tourette's and it's such an important conversation to have today. I'm really excited to have him and everyone, welcome Josh Hughes. Hi Tasha, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad, thank you. Good, <laughs> good. Thank you for having me, like coming here, not having me. I was like, thank you for having <laughs> thank me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for being here. Where have you come from today? I've come from Hertfordshire today. Nice. Yeah. Is that far? Is that far? No, it's like just outside North London. So yeah, half an hour, 40 bad. minutes, yeah. Okay, that's not too yeah. bad. Mm. I'm really happy to have you here and oh, thank you. to have this conversation. Mm. And, and how how have you been? What have you been up to? Yeah, not much to report, really. But yeah, it's been a mad couple of months, really, with all this stuff going on with me. But yeah, it's, um, it's good. All very exciting and... Yeah, good. Yeah, Let's take you it. back to the start. Okay. So when you back when you mm. back you were a child, when you were little. Yep. People. Um yeah, taking it all the way back to the childhood. Yep. So tell me when um you had a was it a ski accident, right? Yeah, it sounds very dramatic and very um quite posh as well, doesn't it? When you say having a ski accident. <laughs> ski but accident. um I, I was on a school trip with my with my school, um, in Italy. And I'd actually been on the ski trip the year before, so it wasn't something I hadn't done before. I was quite okay at it. Um and yeah, on the second to last day I had a very minor fall, like I, mm. I fell over like most people do when they're yeah. inexperienced. Um I got back up and cut a long story short to like the next day, um uh, we were going for our last day of skiing and mm, fuck and I was on a ski lift on the way up and I just started getting quite a severe back pain and then yeah. like I don't like saying twitches from that moment because I didn't know what it was, but it was like I was like convulsing from my back and yeah. I can tell you that the kids on that ski lift were terrified because they had no idea. I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. But and then it started from there really. That was like the start of my threats journey and but with um from that situation, my teachers were great and we obviously had to get back from Italy and we weren't flying, we were taking a coach. So I was oh, like, gosh. and from there on in that day really progressed quickly to the point where I couldn't control my arms. My legs were going a lot. So it just started off with just mm. physical like twitches and like motor tics. Um, and yeah, couldn't control myself. So I had to be strapped to the back of a coach for like 20 hours straight because I couldn't not hit something or someone. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's literally how it started. I mean, and I was, yeah, I was, 14 then um yeah. and I, I hate using the word normal because it's not that black and white but I was fine yeah. before that you know <laughs> um and my life yeah my life changed from there but yeah that's how it started with my yeah. threats journey and at the time did you like were you scared were you kind of like what's going on like what's the situation because I can't imagine you know you have a little fall and all of a sudden it's mm. like you know you're experiencing <coughs> this new this new thing like how did it make you feel at the time it felt like that's a good question actually. I, I I felt like I felt like it was my fault for some reason. Like I I it, yeah because obviously like dealing with my my parents had to deal with a lot of it because I was so young mm. and I didn't know what was happening to me and lots I had to go to lots of appointments. But I felt almost like guilty and I had to like tell a lot of people what was going on with me and a lot mm, fuck. A lot of people were just like, well, just stop it. I'm like, oh, yeah, that'd be, that'd be nice if I could yeah. just stop it. But I felt like, can I just stop it? Am I am I putting this on a little bit initially? Because I was like, am I able to, like, 
stop myself from doing this. But that's when I realised that, no, we couldn't. And then, um, I can't remember how many months, it must have been like four, maybe five months, the the, the like the vocal ticks came on, like, yeah. whether it was like just a noise like, or then it started to, that random words and swearing came out. And that that was the, the hardest bit, I think. Yeah. I could deal with the movements. Yeah. Like the physical stuff was like, right, this is where my life's going to like change quite dramatically now. Yeah, and were you in school at the time? I yeah. was at school. Um, <laughs> um, before I got diagnosed properly, which was probably about a year down the line, yeah. maybe 18 okay. months after I have initially started switching, um, I kind of was a bit sketchy with school because I was trying new medication as well. There was lots of different things going on because it wasn't... I think as well, a lot of people with Tourette's now, looking back, will feel the same, that you kind of have to go for a little bit of a checklist of like what this could be, especially with yeah. where I was physical. <laughs> People thought I had like um, a trap nerve because of the yeah. kind of movements I had. Um, it obviously wasn't that, but you don't necessarily go straight into Tourette straight away because I didn't have the vocal and it was so yeah. quick. Um, school was tough, but I had to say like my school were incredible. Once I kind of got integrated back in after having quite a long time off, um, especially down the line, it kind of got to GCC age and missed a lot that year or two before. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah it was strange, but the school handled it really well. They basically told everyone, the whole school. Um, okay. Which, was I, I can't remember if I was asked if they if they wanted it that way, but yeah, um, it was definitely best. And I was very lucky. I didn't get bullied or anything for it. It wasn't like that, but it was just very hard to like socialise with kids who didn't understand or I used to get lots of kids like kind of come up to me saying, hi, Josh, and then I noticed they're looking at me waiting for me to do something. <laughs> um, right. And it's, I'm not saying I ever put it on because I didn't. Usually yeah. it would just happen. But there would be times where people would like stand there almost waiting for me to do something. And I'd just give them like throw a dog a bone. Do you know what I mean? Just like, fuck. And they'd be like, yeah. oh my God, he's got it. No, right. And I'm, like, I'm just making that clear. I'm not putting it on. But just sometimes it was that social side of where kids were like, you need to convince me you've got it before I leave you. Do you know what I mean? A yeah, little bit. Yeah. But that was that didn't happen often. But it was more in public that it became harder rather than school. School was school was alright. Yeah. But, um, that's good to hear that you had that support in school, and yeah. it's so important to make sure that you know that inclusive team representation is in school. That's kind of where you start to you're learning who you are as a person, 100%. and that's when you're learning your like your mind, mm. everything. Like that's yeah. where it starts to evolve. And then you know you got through school. And I've, also, then you got dyslexia as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I think that's, yeah, in school, that was also tough, but I did have the support there. Not not crazy support, if I'm being honest with, like, with yeah. dyslexia. I think, yeah, we are talking, like, coming up to, like, 15 mm -hmm. years ago when yeah. I was at school like that. So I think that's helped. That, that's a lot better now for, for kids that have got dyslexia and stuff. Um, yeah. uh, I've, I've listened to some of your other podcasts. You've had people on here who've also got, like, dyslexia and stuff. So, yeah. but it's... um. That's quite known now, which is great. Yeah, definitely. But, um, yeah, I think that's another one, another thing to come to terms with when you're young. Yeah. Because y you you just think that you're a bit dumb when you're not. It's mm. actually just a case if you just see it in a different, from a different viewpoint, if you want, you know what I mean? I, 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 I was quite dyslexic to the point where I also really struggled to read on white paper with black ink. Okay. Um, and especially with like a whiteboard and stuff like that, it was quite tough. So sometimes it used to give you like a clear cover of uh, coloured paper, and my, the colour that worked for me best was pink. And it mm. fucking fuck fuck you, pink. It would it would be pink. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't mind that now, but back then when you're like 15, 14 year old <laughs> boy, you're like it would be pink. And I actually ended up getting pink fucking fuck yeah. uh, fuck. I got pink tinted glasses. Oh. And me being the show off I am, I just wore them all the time. Love and that. I started getting called Elton Josh, and I I even got Christmas cards saying to Elton Josh, <laughs> um, just embraced it. But, oh, I love that. I bet yeah. they were cool though. They look cool. They were FC UK. They look cool. <laughs> they're definitely not cool now, but they look cool at the time. Yeah, they're definitely like they're probably be fashion now. Yeah, probably. I've still got them knocking about somewhere. In, like, yeah, you, know, you back should wear the them. Yeah, hundred percent. Love it. <laughs> So then obviously then you left school mm. and what was kind of like your um, your mentality? Like, <laughs> you know, you got the future ahead of you. Like, what was your goal at the time in school, you know, especially with Tourette as well? Or like, mm. obviously you wanted to do barbering. Was that kind yeah. of your dream as well from the start? Or mm. was that something you kind of slowly got into? Honestly, no. So I actually didn't become a barber till I was about 20 or 21. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but before that, when I left school, I, I, I left school with no GCSEs. I, I couldn't sit my exams. Um, 
Yeah, and I think even the GCSEs I did get, which would have been PE and, and English, uh, not English, uh, art. I was always quite good at art. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure they gave me PE. But like just as like, go on, he's, he's done all right. But um, yeah, so but but going forward from there, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I, I felt for my parents because I think they were worried about, fuck you, ain't your mum? I was worried about what I, fuck you. <laughs> um, I was worried, ab- sorry. It's okay, I did I think sorry. they were worried yeah. about, how I would go forward. So my my mum was a gardener and my dad actually was on a like had a like a construction firm but he went more into landscaping at the time. So they basically hired me and we worked together and we had a bit of a separate thing going. So my mum did the, the gardening, my dad did landscaping and I actually did um architectural salvage, which is like yeah. buying and selling tut basically. Yeah. Uh, anything from an old post box to an old milk churn to like a chimney pot, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and I loved it. Um but I think because I was like I lived and worked with my parents and we literally worked over the road from where we lived. Mm. And it was so on top of each other. And <laughs> um, it was hard because it was days where I couldn't go to work because of my touch was too severe. It affected my sleep. It affected my mood. And yeah. <clears throat> um, But I, I've always I've always been social, though, even in that period of time. I've never been like a recluse or anything like that. I've always had really good friends around me. Like um, my fiance, Lucy, and I have been together since we were... 16, 17, oh. <laughs> so 11 years now. Um, and yeah, Lucy's been a great support with me and my and my parents as well. Because I mean, when I got first got diagnosed, that must have thrown, mm. it was a bit mad at the time. And like I have nowadays, sorry, jumping forward yeah, from back. No, that's fine. But like, I get a lot of people asking me now about my Tourette's and like my diagnosis. And it's not like I couldn't fuck, not like I can't talk about it. Yeah. But because I was so young, I wasn't really in charge of it. Mm-hmm. It was my parents and luckily at the time, because my dad had like private health care at the time, so we got to see a lot of specialists quite quickly. Yeah. But it, we were in a fortunate position at the time. Um, yeah, in that sense, we kind of fallen from grace in that way. But sorry, going back to the um, going back to like we yeah, when I left school and stuff. Uh, I went to college and did like three D design and art and design, which I loved all that. And then, I, unfortunately, I just don't think I had the academic side for what, like, the digital stuff now, like the, um, you know, Photoshop and all that kind of stuff. That wasn't really my forte. I was a lot more hands-on and creative. But, yeah, um, yeah, did the gardening with my mum for a bit um, and did this, uh, I did the architectural salvage for a couple of years. And then I'm, I'd still say it's the biggest decision I've ever had to make was to leave the family firm. Yeah. And oh, fucking wankers. Um I actually became an estate agent for a bit. Um, oh. um, yeah, no offence to estate agents out there, but I'm not that kind of prick, so I couldn't do that for too long. Yeah. Um, but no, I gave that a good go, and it was local. Um, and it gave me a newfound confidence. I liked wearing a suit for a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that's when I, I quit that, and I'd saved up, and I did a barbering course just around the corner from here. So. Wow, that's amazing. And, mm. you know, did the barbering course kind of... Um, What's the word? Is that kind of when you started doing a course? Was, was that the kind of moment click for you? Is that actually this is what I want to be doing with yeah, a little my bit. future? Yeah, I love the kind of industry. The fact that like <clears throat> even the way you can present yourself as a barber, yeah. like, it's not about like you can have tattoos or whatever. But I just like the fact it was so casual. I could wear my hat to work. I could <clears throat> fuck. I could be. Yeah, I could talk to people all day, and that's always been something that I've enjoyed doing, like talking to people, asking them questions, and yeah. even from a young age, I was always kind of like more with the adults than kids my own age because. Uh, fuck I just didn't uh, fuck I just enjoyed it like I enjoyed making people laugh and I, I found I found like intelligent wit to be quite a strong tool mm-hmm. to be able to kind of gain not just your own confidence but make people believe in you as well do you know what I mean so <clears throat> um, that's really nice to hear like mm. I'm even getting a bit emotional because like the way you're just so the way you are and just the way that you also want to give back as well that's just so mm. lovely to hear and no, I appreciate that and that you know, you opened up your own barbershop as well. Um, yeah, so Hughes yeah, so, uh, yeah, Hughes and Co, H and Co. Yeah, have been uh, three years this August. We've been open, opened up in between the lockdowns. That was a bit tough as well. But mm. I worked, I worked somewhere else in St Albans for about um, four or five years. Um, and the thing with my Tourette's as well, when it came, when it came to work. So when I first started like at college and then went into mm. my first job, I. My Tourette's was bad, but not that bad. I know it sounds really weird to explain, like even seeing me sitting here, like quite physically twitching. I mean, it's because I'm a bit nervous, but yeah, um, I'm more vocal than I was when I was younger. But I have had periods of time where my, my Tourette's has almost lie dormant. Like <laughs> I've been re- doing really well, like mentally, physically, and I've been okay. And, you know, maybe a few, I don't want to say like 
it wasn't as calculated as like every couple of months I might yeah. twitch, but um, but I might not be as physical. I might be more physical, less vocal. Um, so there has been like periods of time where like minimally I've not twitched for like eighteen months, and then okay. I think it was around like my. So I was Barbara when I was twenty. Yeah, so I think I had a, a period of time from about eighteen odds. I was actually okay for quite a long time, and yeah. honestly, not saying I forgot about it because it was like my upbringing became my Tourette's, but. Um, I thought I thought I, I thought I'd grown out of it, and that, that is possible. Yeah. Especially if you've got it from a young age, it is possible to just snap. And I thought I had, and then I had a bit of a stressful moment on holiday with a few friends, and it came back with a vengeance. And it hasn't. I'm not going to say it hasn't stopped since then, but I would have sometimes a month, two months mm -hmm. of it being really bad, and then it, I'd be kind of settled down a bit, just be a lot more manageable, and then it come back again. Yeah. So I started my job as a barber, and I was doing okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I worked up very quickly. I got, you know, got kind of like barbering is like driving. Okay. You think you're the bollocks when you've like finished your course. You think when you've just passed your test, you think oh, I've got this. You only learn when you're on the yeah on the on road the and when you're on the job. Right. And yeah, I loved who I worked with and the lads I worked with, and they, were, they really gave me a confidence boost. But unfortunately, my, um, my threats was kind of getting in the way of that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and I still love my boss, and I'm not my old boss. I'm not slagging him off. But it just got to the point where it was, especially around children in the shop, because <clears throat> I'm quite, um, my language can be quite, like, you know, vulgar or just swearing in general. And that, actually, that's a really tough thing with the kids, because I, and I know it's always a weird thing to say as a full grown man, but I love kids. Like, they're, they're yeah. a big part of my life, whether it's family or family friends, or even like some of my best friends have got kids. And yeah. I just always like, you know, gravitate towards them. I think it's just the pureness and the fun and the joy out of it. But, um, and that's why I want to help, you know, young'uns with, um, you know, not just Tourette's, but all like neurodiverse conditions. Cause I think mm -hmm. it's easy and it's a little bit easier now yeah. than it was like even when I was a, a kid. But, there's still a long way to go, I think, and um, mm -hmm. but even more recently, since I've taken to social media, like it's, um, I've noticed there's a lot more awareness. I, I get less looks because I think more people understand. Yeah, because I feel like <laughs> yeah, because you did that TikTok and that kind of literally you went viral, didn't you? Mm. And I think you know TikTok's kind of a place. I say it's kind of like a safe space. Like mm. you know, people can I feel like people are more themselves on TikTok and yeah, more. I see so much more awareness, education on TikTok. People speaking out in their stories, experiences, and so many people can relate as well. And, and yeah. I looked for your TikTok and what you're doing. It's just amazing. I was literally Thank you. like just wow. And I think you should be proud <laughs> of yourself. And I hope you are. Because no, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's... what you're the work you're doing. You are helping <laughs> so many young kids out there even older generation younger generation mm. middle generation like yeah you're you're using your voice and it's helping so mm. many people out there and you know when you when you went onto tiktok was it just kind of like okay i'm going to go for it and just do a video and see what happens did you expect it to go it's, viral? yeah it's, it's no honestly that, that last bit of the question no i did not expect it to go viral um mm -hmm. I, i'm not i'm not saying i'm afraid of the camera or anything but it wasn't like you know Lucy's always been, um, she works in social media marketing, so it's always been like a part of our life for like, you know, whether it's Lucy's work or just generally, I like, grew up in that age of having Instagram from like 16. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so I, I opened my shop and I'd probably been open for like two years and obviously just trying to promote the shop. Um, yeah. H and Co, fuckers. Um, yeah. Um, I was just trying to just get, yeah, just get the shop a following and build that up. And then I started to kind of like, my threats was coming, getting worse again. Like I said, I have ups and downs. And I hate saying worse because it's kind of always a level. But yeah. I mean, even since I've been posting more online, it's definitely got worse. Like it's, it's, like, it's like highlighting it more. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that I think I can see with like Lewis Capaldi because yeah. he's highlighting his threats and he's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm not comparing myself to yeah, Lewis Capaldi, yeah. but yeah. I can understand the pressure of that. Mm -hmm. um, but going back to your first question about like, I just decided one day to put the camera up while I was doing a haircut, and then Bridget was with a little lad, Harry, who I love Harry, and when I first started filming, he was about five, maybe six, and I cut his three older brothers and his dad, and they all come in together, one after the other, oh. and they spend the whole afternoon in the shop with the PlayStation, the drinks and all that. Um, and his, his other brothers are great, like the boys are lovely, really genuine lads, but me and Harry just clicked really really quickly, um, yeah. and we, we're just silly, and he was not, yeah, he commented to some of my my ticks, but he was never baff he was never phased by it. He just cracked mm -hmm. on and just kept laughing. 
Uh, and yeah, that's the first video that went viral. But um, and then it just kind of like went on from there. I'm like, you know, should I keep trying to do this? And mm -hmm. I, I've kind of decided that I'm going to try and keep doing this for not just for myself, but you know, to raise awareness for Tourette's. And mm -hmm. I've just done like a, a great campaign with um, Tourette's Action, like the uh, fuck with um, the the UK's leading Tourette's charity, and they're amazing, especially when we've like being diagnosed and. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they're doing some really, really great work. And we've just done a, um, a little TikTok docu-series, which has been really fun with some other ambassadors. I'm an ambassador for the charity now, and um, we'll keep working towards that. But, yeah, we did a two-month um, campaign where we even had, like, billboard trucks that had all our names on it, and they drove around London and went to everyone's hometown all over the country. Because wow. they're a bit spread out as well, which I had nothing to compare that to, like, feeling-wise. I didn't, mm. you know, I've never had my face on the side of a truck or whatever and it just came to my shop and drove around all day and it was really strange how did it feel mm. seeing that moment of you your face <laughs> you know how did it feel for you deep down i felt very proud yeah. i felt like you know mm, mm, spastic uh fuck um i felt like you know this young lad uh, you know i'm just a, i'm just an average joe who's got this condition that has made me very known not just bef mm. not bef before tiktok I was always known, I was known a lot for like being called Tourette's Josh mm -hmm. when I was younger. And it's just weird now that it's kind of got to the point where like, I walk around now and people recognise me and that's very strange. And I have such genuine, lovely people come up to me. I, I was actually, <laughs> fuck, I was in um, Costco the other day loading up the, sh uh, the shop with uh, drinks and stuff. And I had a lovely mum come up to me and she said, um, I've seen your TikToks and I think you're doing great. And my son hasn't got Tourette's, but mm. he's got ticks and I can't tell you how much confidence it gives him seeing you do it. And... I almost have to keep it together. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you. Um, because you know, I'm quite an emotional person and, and yeah. that, that, hearing that, even in the middle of the you know middle of the store, is quite overwhelming, especially from a complete stranger. Yeah. And I'm used to talking to people, random strangers all the time at work. Um, and also, one, touching on that, like I've got such great customers. Uh, everyone that comes in is so genuine. I mean, I'm sure there's some people that have, it's mm. been too much for them and they've not come back, but I wouldn't know if you know what I mean. I've never had an even mm -hmm. told to my face, but it's, um, yeah. And I've actually had a few other young uns come into the work that have also got Tourette's, which is one of my most viral video now with a little lad who's Amazing. 12. And he'd never met anyone with Tourette's either. And um, mm -hmm. I've spoke to him since the video went viral because it is it has gone quite crazy, that video. Yeah. Um, I've just checked in on him and his mum just to see how they're doing. And he's he's felt better since that meeting because he just never knew anyone else that had it and nothing yeah i'm not trying to say i am his role model but he's a, he's such a good lad and yeah if we can support each other uh, and there, but there is stuff out there for support groups and stuff mm -hmm. i think it's just the case of finding it a little bit yeah i mean that's kind of where people mm. get a bit lost it's like knowing where to start like mm. <clears throat> especially with my parents back in the day they were a bit like because i was born to hearing family so they were literally like we don't know where to start we mm. don't know where to go and i think that's probably where it's the first step of okay, where do we start? Where do we mm. go? There's so many different communities, different things that can work for you. Yeah. And for you, like going back to school, what was like what was your support? What got you through? Like what really kind of mental mentally as well kept you strong? <laughs> I'd say I'd say in that respect, probably family. Like, mm. you know, um I've got two younger sisters, I'm the eldest. Uh, fuck. Um yeah. <laughs> What kept me strong? I'd say family and friends, definitely. I, I never felt weird, if you want to say mm. that word. But, um, and yeah, my mum my and dad really supported me massively. And they um, looked into a lot of different, like, <laughs> my dad's that kind of guy that, you know, you give him a topic and he'll go and research it. And mm. I'll have every piece of information you ever want on it. <laughs> and, um, but I did go to clinics and my dad, that we drove around the country sometimes going to different, um, well, not a clinic, but we went to like, a Tourette's, um, not Tourette's Day, but like a... Um, like, a like a community kind of... Yeah, like, like, like it was like a massive hall and there was like yeah. lots of people with Tourette's and some people I'd seen like off TV, like, um, you know, so there were lots of people with Tourette's in one room, which was my first my first taste of that and I must have been about 14. Mm -hmm. And I was also with Great Ormond Street at that time. They had a clinic there as well with kids with Tourette's, but I'll go back to that in a minute. Um, and yeah, but it was great to just meet other people with Tourette's and that's what I think I've done with that lad just recently with that video that I think meeting people makes yeah. you th gives you that sense of community that you're not the only one because I think especially as a young person growing up fuck with Tourette's 
I think you because you won't know anyone else around. Mm -hmm. It'd be very well. It's not rare, but it'd be quite unusual if there was someone else in your town that had it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So you do feel quite alone, and or in that, in that sense. I mean, I never actually felt physically alone because I've got a great family and friends and whatnot. But it did feel. I didn't. I, I had no idea that any that as many people had it as as yeah as I thought. Yeah. Um, and did you like you know you you did you like ever since coming out like you know on social media do you yeah. feel like there's so much more of a bigger community out there? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. And I've learned so much from those other people on, online. Mm -hmm. Um. There's uh, there's this um, this beautiful girl called Seren who I've been doing the campaign with. I think she's about 19. Um, her name on TikTok is Otter's Pockets, and she's built a massive following. And she's so educational, and she is just yeah, she's she's just incredible. She, and she's also blind as well, so mm. she has not only got threats and she's blind. Like so the, the the stuff that she's had to overcome is mm. just incredible. And I'm not saying that like oh because she's blind as well. I mean, it's, everyone. There's always going to be someone yeah. worse off, but in a respect. But like, yeah. I feel like I've just got threats, so she's dealing with threats and being blind. But she's just an incredible character, with such an amazing yeah. ethos and life, and in, uh, and also educating young people. And she was like, mm, "Fuck!" She's like a, a um, she's a um, an ambassador for the brownies and guides and stuff like. That. I just think it's beautiful, and you know, mm. that's what it should be about. But also, it's not just. I'm not just doing it just for the young kids and stuff. It's also, like you said, middle age and older as well. Like some people get diagnosed when they're like 58, mm -hmm. and there's people I've worked with in the in the um, in the campaign I've done recently that have gone through situations like that, and yeah. it's, it's given them. I think getting diagnosis is a bit of a strange one because some, I think in this day and age, everyone thinks, "I'll oh, just get diagnosed because you can label it." But actually, for some people that have got a condition, mm -hmm. it can give them a purpose and also. A reason, yeah, you know, um, and I know I physically know people that I think they even their views are changing. Yeah, your average man, middle aged man, would be like, Oh god, they're labeling everything now, or you know, whether it's ADHD, whether it's autism, mm -hmm. whether it's been you know, Asperger's, whether it's Tourette's, whether it's a tick. I just think, but those people, and I'm not judging them because yeah. I think we've all grown up in different generations. Uh, fuck, I think they're coming around to the idea of actually, it's not just the fact that yeah, it's 2023 and everyone's got everything labelled down to a T. Mm -hmm. But I think it's more that we've all we're making everyone a bit more aware of how other people must see the world in a different way and their daily how they deal with it. Yeah, I um, massively agree with you on that. It's so true that, you know, some people just don't won't kind of small minded in some ways mm. that they won't understand that. They don't mean it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we've got to respect that in the same yeah, way as well. Yeah. If we're trying to get them on our side, we've yeah. got to be a little bit lenient to them. Not let them get yeah. away with it, but just educate. That's educate. the point. Yeah. Because <laughs> especially do you deal with any kind of negativity on social media? Yeah, yeah. There, there, there's some online, hundred yeah. percent. Um I try not to feed into it. Um mm -hmm. and we oh, fuck I try not to engage with it. I think because um, my fiance Lucy helps me a lot with the the, the um, online stuff, um, with editing and stuff like that. So we have to be careful with what we put out. So, fuck, fuck. Because um, obviously my language and stuff as well can be quite hard. And sometimes, unfortunately, I say horrendous things like whether it be racist or overly mm. sexual and sh fuck you, tits, uh, stuff like that. Um, so when we put stuff out, we're very cautious. But yeah, online we do get some bad comments. And initially, when we first started posting and the videos started to take off, we were kind of trying to like educate people when they were being rude or negative or mm -hmm. damn right just horrible but it got to the point where I was like let's not bother engaging with it yeah um and just keep doing what we're doing because I think otherwise you're giving you're giving them what they want which is a reaction yeah um and I've, I've stood stood by that um because there's no point I, I I welcome some negativity or some people questioning it yeah um and especially the the biggest fuck the biggest thing with people that have got Tourette's online now is being accused of they're not doing it they haven't got it Oh, they're faking it. Wow. Um, but unfortunately, there is instances where people have been faking it online. Right. So I don't really blame the people that are accusing people of faking it. Yeah. But I'm not. You're not going to catch me online for getting my medical records up or give because I don't yeah. feel like I need to. I don't need to justify right. it to anyone. But um, fuck you, um, mm, cross. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Sorry is like an impulsive thing. I don't yeah, know yeah, why. Yeah, but it's, honestly, like, don't be sorry. Like, you don't need to. Public apologize. transport comes out everywhere. You just always <laughs> apologising. Um, what was I saying? I was saying. Um, you know, you're saying that um, basically. Um, yeah, some people fake it actually on TikTok. Yes. And, yeah. yeah, there's a there's a lot of that out there, and I've spoke to a few people 
through social media who have been also been like accused of like I don't think this is real. I mean, we're talking minimal in comparison mm. to the positivity for me personally. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it happens. Oh, I, I checked my phone this morning. There was probably three or four of like, I don't think this is real. And but what I, I really like to make clear as well with my videos personally is I'm cu- I'm doing a whole haircut mm-hmm. and it's like half an hour, forty minutes could even be an hour. And I'm condensing it down into three minutes to get the juicy content in there. Yeah. Uh, and I am trying to educate, but also be humorous and also show my, my client and myself. And uh, um, and so I think some people think like, oh, God, he he's like twitching all the time. But I'm like, I'm not calling people dumb, but like, yeah, this is a three minute video and it's a whole haircut. Yeah, you can't do your 45 minute haircut you know <laughs> in I mean? three minutes. Yeah. It's, like, it's even like your podcast here. Like we could be talking for two hours, but you'll you'll condense it down yeah. for, the, for the good <laughs> stuff. It's That's how it goes. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck you and your mum. I love my mum. Um. Yeah. So, but yeah. So you have to deal with that. But I yeah. think the the negative stuff is what I I really think a lot of people do get hooked mm-hmm. on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, like, it's about like not looking for it as well. Yeah. And once you feed into it, that's when it keep going, keep going. And yeah. like you said, they want that reaction. The best thing mm. to do is not give it. And the best answer is to keep doing what you're doing. Hundred percent. And keep educating, keep raising awareness. And yeah. it may annoy them more, annoy them more, but yeah, but that's the benefit. That's the it? benefit. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you've been through that as well. With like being a bit more personality and mm. growing bigger, that people are always going to hate that mm-hmm. a little bit. And there's always uh, not saying everyone's jealous of you, but mm. jealousy is a bit of a is a bit of a green eyed monster, and it comes out in very different ways. Yeah, yeah. It's just sharing stories and you know we're all human we're all equal and some of us may just be a bit different but mm. it's like so what we're different it's about celebrating that you know empowering and yeah. you know what you're doing is empowering you're sharing your story you're sharing your experiences and you really are sharing that message that you know you got Tourette's but that's okay and mm. these these things will happen it's about how you overcome them and yeah. you, you've overcome them in such a positive way and of course like there would there'd be down days and you know, you have, you, but you get through them, you get stronger mm. each time, and you know. Well, of course, I mean, yeah, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Don't get me wrong, right? Yeah. I'm lucky that I, I work for myself. I've, I, I'm able to work, and I appreciate some people. Fuck with Tourette's, might not feel like they can. Yeah. I just think it's a case of finding what works for you. Mm-hmm. And I get questioned all the time. It's not negative, but online people are like, how have you not ruined someone's haircut or like stabbed someone in the neck or mm. something like that? And I'm just like, I can't tell you exactly why, but it's. Um, it works for you. It works for me. And I think it's similar with a lot of different like neurological conditions where I found something a bit similar with drawing for me, mm-hmm. that actually my hyper focus is focused on that. Yeah. And I can't, t- I'm not going to lie, I sit here and say that I've never messed up someone's haircut cause, because I'm, I'm only human. But that's not actually been correct, connected to my Tourette's even miscommunication or, um, you know, when, when I started out as a rookie. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I've got to the point where, you know, I work for myself and we're doing really well. Um, I'm looking to open more shops. Mm-hmm. Um, I've My sister works with me. My best friend works with me. My sister's boyfriend works with me as well. Oh, wow. And we've got a great little like family team there and mm-hmm. they're really supportive. And I'm trying to pick them up as well. Um, and I, I feel really accepted by, like, by the barbering community as well, as well as the Tourette's community. Um, and... Yeah, I've got like you know, great family and friends as well. That really helps. And yeah, I'm just going to try and see where this goes because, um, yeah, I'm not going anywhere, if you know what I mean. Love that. Mm. You're not going anywhere yeah. and you shouldn't because, yeah. you know, the fact that, like, you, you, I can't even, like, you're just mm. amazing. Just the fact that even mm. you're showing people you can still work and you're figuring out what's best for you and figuring out what's, even though you've got a condition, and you, it's just about finding what works for you and mm. going with that and taking it easy. And sometimes I feel like, especially the younger generation, so much more pressure on them as well, the social media and everything that's going on with life right now. I feel like they really have got it on their shoulders yeah. and they're having to really get through their teenage years with so much on And their everything heads. at their fingertips as well. Yeah. Everything is in that fucking, fucking brick. Yeah. Everything is in that phone. We didn't, I mean, I know you're a little bit younger than me, but we didn't have it quite no, the same. No, we had, what, Nick Nokia f- Yeah, flip, flip phones, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember my mum and dad getting their first mobile phone. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. the Game Boy. Yeah. I was doing hopscotch back in the day. Yeah. I remember getting my mum to pull out the internet cable so I could go on the, go on the computer. <laughs> yeah. Mum, get off the phone. Yeah, literally, you know that's, I mean? that's like how it was for us back in the day. Yeah. So 
well, for them, it's so much more different that they're mm. having to. But at the same time, it is actually quite beneficial because I feel like now they have TikTok, they they can see me and you, and yeah. they now have that kind of advantage. Whereas I feel like maybe for you it's different, but for me personally, I have no one to look up to in terms mm. of um, who I could like rely on if I kind of needed that advice or if I kind of needed someone just kind of you know that motivational kind of thing. But I didn't. When I was back then. I didn't have that that moment especially on tv no rep- mm. representation is there anyone in tv mm. with Tourette's so obviously Lewis Capaldi yeah that, that, but yeah um yeah Lewis, Lewis has put like shone so much light on Tourette's mm. but to be honest, I felt the same as you yeah that there wasn't really representation and I think at times there's been when I was younger as well granted I didn't know if I was allowed to have a representation do you know what I mean like no, yeah um yeah yeah, like, oh, of course there's not going to be someone on TV or, <laughs> fuck, like, you know, I'm getting a little, I'm getting asked questions about TV stuff and I'm like, yeah, I've seen it. I mean, do you know who the first one was? And I don't really associate myself, not like I don't associate myself with him, yeah. but Pete from Big Brother, I don't know if you remember. And then there's been a few documentaries that have come out over the years and I'm not slating all of them, but I do yeah. think actually the narrative hasn't been of the person with Tourette's. It's been what Pete, uh, it's been... <laughs> I've never been on a, t- on a TV documentary, yeah. so what can I say? But I think there's a lot that sometimes in production, it get the, the the viewpoint gets a little bit swayed to more to more like how it looks from the outside, rather than the perspective of the person who's got Tourette's. And I got think me. that's what we've done with that recent campaign. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think what I want to get out there as well on the mm, fucking sound waves um, is uh, is that Tourette's is not rare. Yeah, it's not a rare condition. It affects like you know, not just vocal and all that stuff. That's another misconception. Everyone thinks everyone swears it's got Tourette's. It's not true. Yeah, uh, but you know, it affects like one in a hundred school children, and there's like three hundred thousand people in the country that have got Tourette's. Yeah, that have, that have been diagnosed, and there's probably thousands more. Yeah, um, and it can start with just a tick. Like I've come across a guy on TikTok recently, t- twenty eight. About nine months ago, started getting a, a neck twitch where you can't stop doing that, and it's progressed. And you know, mm. but that's why I want to do what we're doing because we're trying to. I, I'd like to get more into the crux of like trying to help people with that initial, yeah, diagnosis thing, like putting them in in touch with the right people. And Tourette's action is that way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's evolving and changing, and I think funding's getting there, and you know, you know, just awareness is the way forward. Yeah. But definitely. I think with everything, and I think I love what you're doing here with this podcast because I okay. think it's really needed and i've listened to all your all, all your podcasts and i think it's just good to highlight everything as well which i think mm. is incredible like i know you've obviously had your quite a, not i was gonna say unusual but it's not unusual but yeah. it's personal to you the way you were raised it's in a hearing family it just must, must be like incredible to come f- through that and come yeah. out this side and make it into a positive thing and that's a beautiful thing you've done as well thank you and highlighting other people's conditions as well oh, thank you oh you're getting me emotional <laughs> no I am too I'm just holding back the tears I'm dehydrated <laughs> <laughs> fucking bitch I'm literally I'm like let me hold it back <laughs> thank you that that means everything and you know that's what is so important I want to give a voice to any community out there and mm. make sure that your story is shared because I feel like there's not enough like, like you've got TikTok and stuff, but I feel like with podcasts, you can really delve deep and yeah. actually you can really share your story and that's what you're here for. Yeah. And, you know, thank you so much for coming today. And no, you, it's just been, been a pleasure. Like, I've learned so much from you as well, like educationally as well, and I can go educate other people. And that's what it's about. It's a domino effect that mm. you tell me, I tell someone, they tell somebody else. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. 100%. And, you know, Obviously, the title is Superpowers for Tasha. And yeah. I want to ask you, what would you say your superpower is? This could literally be very generic. It could be you can sprint sex. 100 meters in Sorry. 20 uh, seconds. It sex. could be um, anything. Sex. Um, I'd say my power is talking to people. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that. It doesn't take me long to break and break, break someone down. Like it's like it's like a fuck, like a... Um, interrogation but I talk to the people every day and that's one of my superpowers and I love talking to people and yeah. of all ages I can see that I can mm. see you're, you've got a very warm personality and oh, I, I can that. see people open up to you very I'm sweaty. quickly so I'm sweating yeah. too yeah. so all good I'm crying as well it's all good <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for coming on I really no thank you for having me thank you <laughs>